One morning in early April, 2021, a certain duck returned to a certain balcony nine floors up on an apartment block in Salford Keys. Maybe she liked the view last year and the fact the balcony gets a lot of sun. Maybe she likes the planters. Or maybe she remembered that the previous year, the owner of the flat, my father Steve, had looked after her well. I like to think so. For whatever reason, Mrs Mallard had returned. A 150 feet above the canal below, Mrs Mallard chose her planter for this year's nest. She did originally go over to this one, which had my herbs in. She wrecked all the herbs, threw them all out. This has all grown since she did that. Um, she looked at these here. This is the nest site she had last year, which is a fuchsia bush. And the eggs were just, the nest was just in there. But a month ago, these were just twigs. So she changed her mind and went over to here. It got off to a bad start. Dad found the first egg had fallen between two of the pots inside the planter and would never be able to hatch if left there. So while she was visiting Mr Mallard, who called to her from the bridge below to, uh, go courting, as my nana would say, Dad rescued the egg and made the spot she'd chosen much more comfortable. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to my apartment. I just thought I'd give you an update on how things are going with Mrs Mallard. And you can see what I'm doing with regards to um, making her feel a little bit better with regards to privacy. Uh, I'm allowed to move around my apartment because I've got these, uh, they're all maps, like aviation maps I used to use when I used to fly. Um, but they're using them as a screen. So I can move around my apartment um, a lot f more freely than I would have done if they weren't there. And it gives you just a little bit of privacy so she's not spooked. I'm not just going to pan around to show you where Mrs. Mallard is at the moment. There she is. Okay, and you can see I've started to do some work with regards to getting ready for um, the ducklings to arrive. Still one or two little things to do, but I've uh, pulled the panther a little bit back from the edge, filled in some gaps. I'm hoping to get some more footage closer to the nest when she leaves later on. But the last few days, she's been actually leaving at night, not during the day. A lot of predators around at the moment. Gulls, magpies, crows. So uh, even saw a peregrine falcon yesterday. With everything prepared, it was just a matter of waiting. And then... Okay, here we have our first baby chick on camera. Um, just a head just peeked out under the wing. Um, I've only seen two so far. Um, it's about quarter to ten now on Tuesday, the 4th of May. So things are moving ahead, but slowly compared to last year. I think the first chick appeared at about 5.30 last year. It was all over and done with by 6.30, uh, but we've been at this now for several hours. I knew there are a lot more eggs this year and the conditions are very bad, so I think she's playing it safe. More to come.
Those conditions Dad mentioned there were winds of 20 miles an hour, occasionally gusting to just under 30 miles an hour, and frequent heavy showers. Not good. Not good at all. OK, just gone 10 o'clock on uh, Tuesday, 4th of May. A lot more activity now. You can see one of the eggs just at the rear of Mum. She's been sort of standing up and moving them around. So as the chicks are hatching, she's moving the eggs that haven't hatched to the top of the pile. Um, you can see a bit of movement at the back. There. There's a couple of chicks there. Uh, but you can definitely see one of the eggs. Um, more to follow. Uh, just coming up to half past 11 a.m. Uh, several chicks have started to show themselves and mum's uh, busy crunching away at the eggs. Uh, she often eats them afterwards uh, full of calcium and goodness. So yeah, but you can see the babies now are a lot more active than they were earlier. Um, Count to about five or six, but I think there's a few more underneath there. Um, we have 11 eggs, so hopefully they've all hatched. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, the most action we've had with the, uh, the chicks since this all started. Um, Back again soon. It was such a tense day. I live over 150 miles away and was nervously waiting by my phone for updates. Uh, we've been doing this for about five, six hours by now. Um, a lot of the chicks are hatching and they're sort of showing their, their faces every so often. Uh, plenty of eggshells have been coming out of the nest. Um, conditions are improving, but uh, it's still going to be difficult to get the babies down. Uh, safely so uh, hopefully it's the conditions will improve as the day goes on I, th I really do believe that's why she's not moved them already it's just because of the conditions it's it's quite cold here and it's very very windy so I think she's just waiting for the conditions to improve over the next hour or so um, and then we'll go on from there and uh, just see a little baby under one of the wings there on the left wing um, they, they just come up for a few seconds and then dart back down again um, yeah, welcome to the world, little ones. It's a cold day. There we go. Those two there. Oh, oh, lovely. How about that, then, eh? Talk about timing. Absolutely fabulous. Looks like things are going to start to happen, which is great. I'm going to try and count them in a moment. Well, there's only about half a dozen or so there, yeah? Might be like one or two more. But at least they're all starting to move around now, which is good. How great is that? Dad could see that things were going to start happening soon and had enlisted the help of a friend to get the bucket down to the ground safely. There's a video explaining that plan. I'll link to it in the description below. The wind was still about 20 miles an hour at this point, though. Here we go. This is my lad. I just popped down onto the deck. As you can see, the babies are just there. She's been calling to them. So we'll wait and see what happens now. I'm not going to move in until she's called them all out of the nest. That's all part of the bonding. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Whilst we're waiting for those cute little fluffy lovely ducklings, oh my god, to jump, I thought it would be a good chance to explain why Dad lowers them down in a bucket. People have been saying, why not just take them all down in the lift together? And the thing is, Mrs Mallard is very distressed. When Dad goes out onto the balcony, he obviously knows from last year, he would have to get her and the ducklings through an apartment, several fire doors, down a long corridor, a long ride down in a lift, <laughs> through more doors. He just really didn't want to put her through any more stress than was necessary. And keeping them outside where they can hear each other means that there's no danger of the bond being broken. And that's what my dad was most concerned about. You see, she's asked him to jump off now. He's pointing to the deck. So we'll move away and they should follow. So we'll just hear them chirping away now. Let me just jump. That's one.
two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All down. This year, a lovely chap from BBC Northwest was there, Ian Haslam, and he filmed this footage from the quayside below. Thank you, Ian. Just before this point, Dad went onto the balcony. Mrs. Mallard attacked him, unsurprisingly, and he encouraged her, quite firmly, off the balcony to go and wait below. Then she called to them as he put the ducklings in the bucket and Dad threw the fishing line down to his friend Neil, who caught it and used it to help control the bucket's position in the high winds. Mrs Mallard and her babies could hear each other the whole time, but obviously poor Mrs Mallard was very stressed throughout. Those winds snagged the line around the bottom rope, but Dad had made sure that there was enough fishing line to manage if the rope got tangled, so it was all fine. Once the bucket was safely down, our Neil held on tight so it didn't blow away, as Dad rushed down from his flat to release them onto the quayside. Here we are, there's Mrs. Mallard, she's looking very fine. And uh, baby's in the buckets. 11. Okay. Right, over here. Yeah, so come, so come. Come on, come on, come on. The bond between Mama and Ducklings was fully preserved and they hurried straight for the water as people looked on in delight. Here we go, Operation Mallard, part two. It's pouring down with rain. The one doesn't want to go. He's had enough jumping today. <laughs> <laughs> How cute is that? There we go. This is my lad and the family. What a day. Terrific. Mrs. Mallard and her ducklings, all 11 of them, swam off towards the River Irwell, where there are nice shallow banks for nesting. May the force be with you, Mrs. Mallard and your 11 children. And then it was all over. Operation Mallard 2 was a great success, despite the terrible weather conditions. Well done, that man. Now, throughout all of this, thousands of people all over the world have been following along through Twitter. My dad isn't on Twitter, so I invited people to send him a message and say where they are in the world, so he can see how many people have been cheered by his care of Mrs Mallard and her family. So, Dad, this part is for you. Look at all of these people who are sending you love and best wishes from all over the world. I've seen replies from Canada, Peru, Ethiopia, Chile, all over America and Europe, Dubai, Finland, Ireland, Jamaica, 
Brazil, Moscow, Australia, New Zealand, India, Mexico, the Netherlands, Thailand, South Africa, Turks and Caicos Islands. Oh, so many places. It's been incredible. I reckon you'll not be short of finding someone to buy you a pint once the pandemic is over. They think you've done something brilliant, and so do I. It might only be a small thing to look after a duck who chose a rather inconvenient location to build her nest, but it's also a really big thing too. It gave people something to smile about, something to feel happy about during one of the most awful times in living memory. So well done, Dad. I love you so much. Thank you for everything. And to all of you on Twitter, I want to say thank you. You've restored my faith in social media. I never thought I would say that. Thank you for making Operation Mallard one of the most wonderful, bizarre and truly heartwarming experiences of my life. Lots of love to you all. So I've got my balcony back and I'm going to be planting up my planters again now with new plants. And uh, that is probably going to be my final video from my balcony. What a wonderful experience. Will they be back next year?